join Ms. Aldrich of Christian Pentecostal Mission International under the apostolic and prophetic ministry of God's anointed servants, Rev. Dr. O. Isaacal, the General Overseer, Rev. Dr. Mercy Isaacal, Co-Pastor, National and International Coordinator, and other anointed servants of God, as they present Faith Clinic every Tuesday. At Faith Clinic, sinners become saints, the sick heal, the barren conceive, the oppressed are set free, the demon possessed delivered. Time, 9 a.m. Ms. Outreach also extends love and antenatal health care prayer sessions for expectant mothers and pregnant women every Wednesday at 4 p.m. prompt. And also every Thursday at 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. for Business Commission, where men and women are commissioned with grace to succeed in business, career, family life, and so on. At Christian Pentecostal Mission International Headquarters, 10 and 12 Matik Salami Street, Ajawa Estate, along Mutala Mohammed Airport Road, Lagos. Please outrage, reaching out to the troubled souls. Don't miss it. CPR, Jesus Christ is Lord. And I want you to open your Bible to Esther chapter 4. The book of Esther chapter 4. And verse 14 is a, is a popular place which I would like us to look into it again. Esther 4 14. Even George, read. For if thou altogether better holdest thy peace at this time, then shall be enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews. From another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come into the kingdom for such a time as this? We want to repeat that verse again. Follow carefully. If you follow carefully, I don't I don't need to speak much. Follow carefully. Reverend George, read. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace, if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, at this time, then, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. Deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. But thou, but thou and thy father's house freedom. shall be destroyed. Mm -hmm. And who knoweth? Mark it. Are you hearing me? Watch. Watch. That's why you are here now. Watch this word that is coming. Huh? Who knoweth? Who knoweth? Whether thou art come to the kingdom. Whether you have come here or to the kingdom for such a time for such a time as this as this who knows download it who knows if anybody knows let him tell me nobody knows why you are here as far as God is concerned, only Him knows. But but whether you have come to here to to this place in a time like this for a purpose. Before you sit down, listen to me. Can I speak to you in an honest way? You are not here by accident. You are not here by choice. Amen. You are here by the plan of God. Amen. And if you are here by the plan of God, the purpose is achieved. Amen. You believe it? Yes, Sit down. The message is ended. Huh? There's no other thing. You know. 
Huh? There's something. Come and take my microphone. The message is ended. If you really follow this thing now, and you catch it, finish. George, for conscience sake, repeat it again. Listen, listen. This is the word of Almighty God. I read again. For if thou art together, uh -huh. holdest thy peace uh -huh. at this time, at this time, there shall be enlargement and deliverance mm -hmm. arise to the Jews uh -huh. from another place. Uh -huh. But thou and thy father's house mm -hmm. shall be destroyed. Mm -hmm. And who knoweth? Here comes the message. But who knoweth? Whether thou art come, whether thou art come to the kingdom, to the kingdom for such a time, for such a time as this, as this. And you still want more explanation? Do you still want more talk? Uh -uh. Such a time like this. Nobody knows why God keep you and brought you here in such a time like this. You can't phantom it. But at the end of the day, you will thank God. Nobody knows. Let me start from my pastors. Nobody knows. This time in your life, why God raised you to be a pastor? In a time like this, you can't phantom it. I like one statement that Jesus made. He said, hey, just follow me. I will make you. <laughs> Don't bother. I will, I'm, I'm responsible for making you. I want to speak to somebody here. I don't know whether the person is here today. Eh? You come? Fix your eyes at my lips. The word I'm speaking is the word of Almighty. It's bigger than me. Someone asked, Ezekiel, what do you mean by one statement you normally make that your longest journey is from your seat to the podium? Can you explain? You cannot understand it here on earth. So don't ask again. And I still continue to say it. The longest journey, the longest travel in my life is to stand out from, the, from wherever I am to the podium to preach or to teach. Heaven understand what I'm saying. You don't know why you are here in such a time like this. Don't think too much. The fuse in your brain can blow up. Just listen. Only God of heaven knows why he brought you up in a time like this. But if I can digress a little bit. By giving you some examples in the Bible, people like me and you, that God 
brought in a time like this. God used them. I put it to you, God is the controller of history. Nothing will happen without God's knowledge. You say you prepare this morning to come to clinic and you enter motor or whatever and you are here. You you are seated and you are listening. It's not you are making. <laughs> it's not you are making. God planned it for a time like this and for a purpose. That's why I say, my brother, my sister, you are not going out from this compound without a result. Yeah. Nothing will pass through the hand of God to you without God authorizing it. Nothing. He is God Almighty. Elohim. He is the creator of the ends of the earth. He spread the heaven like cotton and shoot stars and sprinkle them in their places. He knows their name one by one. Do you know? God knows how many drops of water in the Atlantic Ocean. I, I don't mean bucket, drop. Go and ask him. He will tell you. The God we are serving is too much God. Too much God. Can I tell you before I end? Forget about that, you are troubled. That we have trouble is over. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This, on this same time, I'm taking my time to study about this God. I, I've never, I've never read one chapter finish of this Bible about God. It blows my mind. How? Can I remind you in case if you forget? If you ask God how many pieces of sand in the whole world, he will quickly tell you. You may not have the number, but God has number. Don't figure it out. Let me learn. Let me learn. A time like this, God brought you out. This is the first day of April. And you are seeing the first day of April for a purpose. A time like this. God wanted to have a people. A people that cross the river. Huh? A people that what? They are not here. The people that cross the river. God wants people that cross what? Yeah. Who are they? Huh? What? Yeah. They say what? Yeah. You are here? <laughs> My dear people. 
God one people that crossed the river he raised one man the people that crossed the river, the river they are called the Hebrews that is the meaning of Hebrew man who crossed the river nobody has ever crossed the river before and God wants to raise people that cross the river he raised one man by name Abraham or Abraham. He raised him up to start with in a time like that. What's your name? Okay. Do you know why God allow you to bear that name? Do you know why God allow you to come up from your family? Do you know why God allow you to come out from your village? Do you know why God allow you to come out from your town and village and nation? In time like this, there is a purpose. And that purpose, you will not die until you achieve that purpose. God wants people that cross the river. He raised one man by name Abraham. This is how he started with him. Read Genesis 12. Genesis chapter 12. Follow me. This is a clinic meeting. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, 2, and 3. Read. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Now the Lord, see, now the Lord said to who? Abraham. Abraham. Abraham, not Abraham. Abraham now. He started with Abraham, father of attitude. Father of attitude. Now, God said to Abraham, eh? Get thee out of thy country. Do you see how he started it? People that crossed the, the river. Now, I want to get the people that cross the river. Abraham, I lay you as foundation. Abraham, now, come out from your country to a journey. Come out from your country. Which country? Who can tell me? Huh? <laughs> you don't know the country of Abraham? Quiet. Okay, we are talking spiritual things here. Come out from your country of darkness. You have been dwelling in darkness. You are hidden. But I have decided to make you the foundation and father of those who cross the river. Come out from your country. From darkness. Huh? Read. Get thee out of thy country. Get thee out of thy country. And from thy kindred. And from thy world. Now, Abraham, when you get out from darkness, you get out from your bad friends, your kindred. Many of you, you have kindred that are so bad. Whether you know it or not, if you are without Christ, you are living in darkness. Your country is a country of darkness. But you are getting out of that darkness. You are coming out from that darkness in a time like this. And you are getting out from your kindreds those bad companies. They won't see your back again. No. Yeah. They will not see your back again. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Next. I'm from my father's house. I'm from your father's house. Come out from your father's house. The devil is your father.
You know, your father is the devil. But you will no more go back to that house again. The, the, the house of idolatry. The house of wickedness. The prince of that house is Satan. Come out! Go ahead. Unto a land. Now, unto. Everyone say, unto. God will put you on. And you land to. God will put you on. And you will land where? To. Ah, somebody is not following me. God will put you on. And you will land to. How many of you are ready? <laughs> huh? On to. We show thee unto a land that I will show you. Whenever the Bible talk about the land, look at me. Whenever Bible talk about the land, it's talking about prosperity. Is somebody here? You are praying for money. You are praying for money. You are asking God to bless you with money. You are going to land there. Ah, I know that you will shout now. I will take you on to the land of prosperity. That is God's portion for you. On to the land. Eh? And I will make of thee a great nation. I will do what? Make of thee. God is going to make of Abraham. Great what? Uh -huh. And I will bless thee. I will do what? It's not my mouth. When God says, I bless you, it's a wholesome blessing. I bless you. Uh -huh. And make thy name great. I will make your name great. Go ahead. And thou shalt be a blessing. And thou shalt be a. Somebody is not following you here. Let me, let me continue. Anybody who will take, take. I will make you a blessing. Yeah. Huh? And I will bless them that bless thee. I will bless them that bless you. Yeah. You are crossing the river. Yeah. Huh? And I will curse him that cursed thee. I will curse that person that cursed thee. Yeah. Now, Believe it or not, I put it to you. All those witches or wizards that are trying to do you harm, they are cursed already. All those marine people who are boasting, yeah, 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 yeah. as far as God is concerned, they are cursed. You are crossing the river. Huh? And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Uh -huh. In thee shall all the families of the earth bless. Stop there. Let me go to another person. What's your name there? In thee. Hear me, I'm speaking on behalf of God Almighty. In thee, huh? in thee, shall all the members of your family be blessed. In time like this, mark you, you are crossing the river. That is somebody God raised to bring up a people called the Hebrews. People who cross over to the other side, to the river. And God has not ceased from walking. 
He's still working today. Can he see somebody here? In a time like this. Hmm? Why are you defeating yourself? Why are you mellowing yourself down? When God said in a time like this, I raise you up. Huh? God raised you up. Go into the whole world. Nobody has your thumbprint. You are special. You are special. Nobody can take your position. You have no equal. You have no equal. You are unique. You are special. And you must finish your work. Mark you, April, April is the month of resurrection. Even though you are dead in March, this is your month. You didn't come earlier enough. I say this is April. Even though you are dead in January, February, March, this is your resurrection month. You will rise vertically and horizontally. Everything in you will rise. Can I talk to somebody? <laughs> I laugh. I laugh. Uh, Abraham, I raise you in a time like this to make my people cross over the river. Well, second person, do you know? Do you know the second person? Huh? Guess. The, the whole Bible is full of people raised. But let me tell you the second person. That person was Moses. Moses. A slave. Exodus chapter 2. Read quickly. Exodus. The second chapter. Begin from verse 1. Judge, read. There went out a man of the house of Levi mm -hmm. and took to wife a mm -hmm. daughter of Levi. Mm -hmm. And the woman conceived mm -hmm. and bare a son. And bare a son. And when she saw him, that he was a goodly child. Now, when he saw him, that he was a proper child. That's the another interpretation. He was a proper child. He was a beautiful child. What, what makes him to be a proper child? Hello? He's talking about Moses. What makes Moses, if you go to ask of Apostle, Stephen says he's a proper child. What makes him to be a proper child? Huh? He said what? Excellent spirits. Huh? You try. Let me tell you what makes Moses to be a proper child. Can I tell you? He was circumcised. He was circumcised on the eighth day covenant. He was a covenant child. Don't joke with a covenant person. Don't ever joke with somebody who has a covenant with God. Don't joke with somebody who entered into a covenant with God. You are playing with your life. For God of covenant will fight for him or for her. Touch not my anointed. And do my prophet know? Who taught you last week? Who is that who is touching you? 
Go and tell them that your pastor said they are playing with their life. God will come as God of hosts, Jehovah of the armies. God will put his uniform. God will fight for you. God will blow his arrow. God will put on his khaki. God will put on his gun. God is about to fight for somebody. Don't joke with a covenant person. Abraham was Abraham. Uh, Moses was circumcised. That is a covenant. But our own covenant is better. Not only that we are circumcised normally as a man, but we are circumcised in the heart. If you are born again, the sword of the spirit has circumcised you. If you are born again here, if you have Christ in you here, you are circumcised. And the one thing that devil will not do is to touch you. Fear not. Your pastor is telling you in the name of Jesus, fear not. You are under a covenant. Anybody who touches you touches the apple of God's eyes. They are joking with their lives. Moses was a proper child. <laughs> Circumcised. Girl, look at him. Okay. I raised you up in a time like this. I don't know whether how many people are taking this message. God raise you up in a time like this. Don't be surprised when God begins to bless you. Because He raised you up in a time like this. For you to redeem your people. You may be small in the eyes of the people. But from henceforth, listen, from henceforth, do you know what the Bible says? Magnify the Lord. Now, do what? That means from now, God will give who save angel or so a magnifying glass. When they look at you, they will not see you as small. They will magnify you as God ought to magnify you. The angels will put magnifying glass to magnify God that is in you. Magnify the Lord with me. <laughs> and let us praise his name together. Vitals. I'm not seeing you the same way. I put on my magnifying glass. You are too big for Satan to defeat. Satan will not defeat you no matter what. Magnify the Lord with your magnifying glass. You never, you, you never read it in the Bible. Say, magnify the Lord with me. Not with this, your natural eyes. Put glass. Put magnifying glass of God. And you see that you are too big. Devil cannot touch you. I am talking to you here. As far as Satan and his demons are concerned, you are a contraband. <laughs> they can't touch. Touch! Not my anointing. And do my prophet no harm. Moses, in a time like this, 
God raised him up. God raised him up. It was not a small journey. You know the story of Moses. But let me anchor this. He went to Pharaoh. Pharaoh means destroyer. Uh, you have been holding my people hostage for 400 years. Now, say Jehovah God. Anytime God wants to do a new thing, huh? 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 He will bring a new name. <laughs> Moses By my name Jehovah You don't know me I'm bringing up my name Jehovah Yahweh Go and tell Pharaoh That Jehovah sent you Tell him to let my people go. I raise you in a time like this. Moses said, ah, ah, You are sending me to a suicide mission. I ran away from Moses, uh, from Pharaoh. You are sending me, they will lynch me, oh. they will finish me. Uh, do you know what Moses did? Moses, look at God. Uh, Moses was trying to start summer. Uh, you know, God was looking at him. What are you doing? You are stammering, eh? Finish, huh? Uh, God said, who made your mouth? Who made that mouth? You're making, oh, 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 oh. Who made it? <laughs> it was a big drama. <laughs> uh, who made that mouth? To making a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to the mission I send you. It is mission possible. Him, I am Jehovah. Uh, but if my people Israel ask who sent me, what will I tell them? Okay. Go and tell Pharaoh I am Jehovah. And tell my people I am. That I am. Finish. You know the story. Pharaoh said, I don't know whom you are talking. Who is Jehovah? I don't know him. <laughs> you don't know him. The self-existing one. You will know him. You will have your body by the seaside where fish will eat you. And you will know that he is Jehovah. To cut the whole story short. God raised Moses in a time like this. Is there anybody in your family that needs deliverance? Is there anybody in your family that needs deliverance? Then God will raise you up in a time like this. <laughs> Don't tell me you can't do it. If you like, stammer as you like. Uh, I'm a woman. <laughs> I'm a small boy. I, 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 uh, who made your mouth? You a woman? Who made the woman? Who made them? I am that I am. Go. Chai. Well, Abraham. Bye. Moses. Let me give you two more I end to cut it short. 
Do you know the next person in a time like this? Read it, Second Kings chapter 7, verse 1. Second Kings chapter 7, verse 1, read. You see what happened. Second Kings chapter 7, verse 1. Then Elisha said. Now, then Elisha said. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Talk saith the Lord. Talk saith the Lord. Tomorrow. Hey, hey. So, do, you, do you hear what I do you know do you hear what I'm hearing? Do you hear? What do you hear? You say what? Sure? Reuben George, read again. Then Elijah said, Elisha said, Elisha said, Elisha said, said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Tomorrow, tomorrow, about this time, about this time, shall a measure of pine flour uh -huh. be sold for a shekel. Uh -huh. And two measure of valet uh -huh. for a shekel uh -huh. in the gate of Samaria. By this time tomorrow, a miracle will be at your door. In a time like this, if you like, doubt, doubt, doubt whatever you want to doubt. But for me, Ezekiel. For me, Ezekiel, I believe God. In a time like this, eh, hunger will not kill me. Oh. I don't know who is believing with me. Eh? Who is that? In a time like this, People are crying. People are begging, begging. People are shouting, country no good. Oh. In a time like this, you, you, and you, everyone hearing my voice, in a time like this, when all that will be crying, you will be laughing. <laughs> and God, you know the story, God used four lepers, four unclean people to do this miracle. The man of God said it, God used four lepers to do this. That God is your God. Yeah. One more we pray. And that person is Esther. Esther means star. Star. How many Esthers are here? Huh? Oh, those of you who did not say anything, maybe your, your star has sunk into the ocean. But as many of you who believe that you are a star, your star will shine in a time like this. <laughs> Oh, something is moving me. Hey. <laughs> Sigh. Esther was a slave. No father, no mother. She was nobody. And the mother Kai was watching her. Esther, God planned a plan for her. 
that Queen Vasta, who was sitting in a wrong place, was removed. And another person came in. Esther, let me not tell you this whole story. Esther was fearing, he was afraid to go and meet the king. Because if, if the king did not raise his scepter and you come, you, you will die. And he was afraid. Mordecai means consecration. Said unto star, What are you doing? Will you not shine? <laughs> I have consecrated myself, Mordecai. He remained for you to shine. I'm waiting for you to shine. Arise and shine. Esther, arise and <laughs> Leave me alone. Huh? <laughs> Mordecai consecrated looking at a star lying west. What are you doing there? Esther, you're a star. You better rise and shine. But if you don't, God can do away with you. You are not indispensable. God will raise another person. But he must do what he wants to do. You don't know why God brought you to the throne in the time like this. Esther said, okay, I can now understand. My eyes is open to see. Mordecai, go and tell my people to fast. And I will go and meet that king of Persia. If I perish, I perish. I must venture to shine in the eyes of that king. I will shine. He will know that I'm a star. Nobody can intimidate me. And he went. God was walking. When the king saw him, her, when the king saw her, it was not ordinary. And the king raised his scepter, showing accepted. Uh, Queen Esther, what do you want? <laughs> My friend, your prayer is answered. Uh, you are not here. I say you are not here. When you are here, we know. When you are here, we know. I say your prayer is answered. Am I who tried to punish Israel? Build a gallow. And he was hung there. Your enemies were hung at their gallop. Fear not! Nobody will terminate your life before you come. Impossible. You know, I have told you a story. I will never forget that story. In Port Harcourt, which a witch woman prepared to fly that night. I was preaching, preaching, and I was told, hey, is it going to stop? Come back and speak to that witch. I stopped. People were looking at me. What is happening? I said, hey, you witch, all your teeth you will use this night, let them collapse. 
and I turn back and continue preaching. Immediately I said that all her teeth collapsed. It's not my it's not my fault. The teeth, the teeth, the teeth. The teeth collapse. <laughs> can I tell you? Can I tell you something? You don't want to hear. All those people who want to bite you to death, all their teeth will collapse. Finally. All these people, God raised them in a time like this. One more person. Do you know the person? Judas Iscariot. <laughs> Judas. Judas Iscariot. Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. After the fasting, he picked 12 people. God Disciples, apostles. Twelve! They were following him. Anywhere he go, we shall follow him. And Jesus looked at them and said, Did I not choose you twelve? But one of you is a devil. He was choosing to betray me. Is a divine plan. Let him do whatever you want to do. Do you know what? In closing, do you know what? Five times Jesus preached to Judas to change his mind. But he determined to perish. He determined to go to hell. And Jesus said unto him, it's better you are not born. And the man went his own way. He's now in hell. May you not be that person raised to serve Satan. May you not be in a time like this. May you not be I close with this. My heart is bleeding for people. May you not be that woman or that man that the devil want to use in this time like this. May you be a good vessel that God will use in a time like this. Whatever that remains, I commit to the hand of the Holy Spirit. Shall we pray? God has a plan for you. A plan to give you a bright future. Come and experience expository teachings and a powerful prophetic breakthrough service this Sunday at Christian Pentecostal Mission International with God's anointed servants. Reverend Dr. O. Isaka, the General Overseer. Reverend Dr. Mercy Isaka, Co-Pastor, National and International Coordinator and other anointed servants of God. Worship with us this Sunday at 8.30 a.m. at Christian Pentecostal Mission International Headquarters. 10 and 12 Matik Salami Street at Jawa Estate along Mutala Mohammed Airport Road, Lagos. You can also worship with any CPM International branch close to you. It will be a time of salvation, healing, deliverance in the presence of God. CPM, Jesus Christ is Lord.